Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode. I'm here with Mark Mackinnon, and today we're going to talk about BESM, Big Eye, Small Mouth, uh, role-playing game. And what makes the role-playing game so unique compared to other ones is the fact that you can take any anime setting that you've ever watched or, or even manga settings and is incorporated into this world. And they just had a, 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 a successful Kickstarter a few months ago for the fourth edition book. And now you're producing, you have another Kickstarter com, um, recently going on right now. Uh, could you explain what's happening now? Sure. So in 2019, we did the fourth edition Kickstarter, as you mentioned. That was the relaunch of the game, along with some of the essential type products like the game screen and character folio, for example. So right now we're running an expansion and accessories Kickstarter. It kind of focuses on a, a book that we consider almost like a core supplement which is called besom extras this is the book of extra optional rules uh, enhanced rules just giving players some extra stuff that we didn't have in the core book uh, for room we decided to, to keep it out and there's a lot of different uh, opportunities to customize your game using besom extras so that's kind of the focus of it but there's actually five other expansions that we have as well from npc books to we have a constructible cardboard dice tower and we also have um, three uh, 2d anime minis which are think of them as like cardboard standees that we are using instead of minis and so it's a total of six products that we have it's launching um, a week ago and it's been on Kickstarter. It's, it's already funded and it's doing quite well. It runs until the beginning of December. Okay, that's exciting. Um, does it does it in any way amplify or change any of the rules that 4E has brought out recently? Well, yeah, certainly if you choose to. I mean, because this is a book of optional and enhanced rules, it's up to the individual gaming groups what they might want to use. So there are some rules that would swap out from what's in the base book. For example, uh, we have a dedicated individual skill system in Besom Extras, where we use more skill groupings in the core book just to, to bundle skills together, make it a little bit easier. So instead of having detective skills or adventuring skills in the core book, you might take specific adventuring like wilderness tracking and uh, or interrogation seduction like very specific type skills so that's one thing that would be swapped out versus the core book versus other aspects which you would add into the core book such as called shots if you wanted to do bypass armor or go for particular parts of the body in addition we have critical hit rules and not just one way to do critical hits but here's four or five or six different ways you can do critical hits and critical fumbles and so that's what really the focus of the book was was to prevent a suite of options a menu of choices and then each gaming group can decide what they want to use all right are you surprised how popular uh besm is um even after all these years yeah, well, it certainly was a, a big question whenever Discami was looking at getting into role playing and licensing Bessem from White Wolf, now Paradox, but White Wolf to do a fourth edition. When I was with Guardians of Order, the previous company, we did editions one and two. And then when we did edition three, that's when it transitioned over to White Wolf. Wolf and that was in kind of early to mid 2000s. So about 2005 is when the transition happened. So fast forward 15 years later, we didn't know if there'd be much demand for a game that you know, is going from a third to a fourth edition, 15 years in the future. Obviously everything has changed in the gaming industry, in the anime and manga industry as well. But when we launched the Kickstarter in 2019, we very quickly saw that there was a, a pent up demand for a robust, universal, multi-genre anime role-playing system that is still on the lighter side of the rules as opposed to something a little bit more heavy that some of the, the point-based multi-genre systems tend to be. Oh, okay. Let's talk a little bit about the stretch goals. Um, uh, I mean, uh, backers love them. And uh, we love seeing more content come out for Big Guy, Small Mouth. Um, what 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 is there currently there and what what do you foresee or hope to see um happen when it comes to stretch goals one of the really interesting things that we did with best extras kickstarter and partially because of the you know obviously the COVID lockdown and lots of time on everyone's hands for a while and that ended up slowing production of the fourth edition books that we did for the first kickstarter and so they ended up not getting into backers hands much later than we expected so during the time when people were sitting at home and twiddling their thumbs, I personally had a lot more time to do some writing. And so I delved into the system and started working very aggressively on getting these different products put together. And then we looked at the timelines of what would be appropriate for a Kickstarter versus where uh, our publishing partner in Japan and Games was versus we couldn't run the 
expansions Kickstarter, I felt, until people had the core book in their hands. And because there was a delay on that, there was a long period of time between when the all the six products were finished and ready to go and when we could launch the Kickstarter. So what do we do? We actually sent everything to press before we ran the Kickstarter. We knew that we were going to produce these. So the Kickstarter was really a great way to get it into people's hand more quickly. Whenever the print products come out in 2021 through retail distribution, they'll be staggered out over six months. We, we don't want to have a glut in the retail sector, especially because we, we don't know what's going to happen with COVID uh, in the coming year. So this is a way for people to get it more quickly through a Kickstarter. So in terms of the stretch goals, why I explained all that is there's very few physical aspects of stretch goals that we could reasonably have because everything is printed already and it's going to be shipping over from our overseas factory during the campaign. So some of the stretch goals that we did, we actually unlocked a few in advance. We expected, we, we set a goal and we thought, well, we're going to reach a little bit beyond that. So let's have some physical upgrades to the books that were popular when we did the first Kickstarter, uh, like a, a spot UV gloss coating on the cover, uh, bookmarks that go into the, the books themselves, the hardcovers. So we upgraded some of those and kind of unlocked them for free in advance. And since then, the campaign has, has blown past those stretch goals. So that was great. But we've done some other things as well that aren't upgrades to the specific products you're kickstarting for. For example, one of the things we're doing is um, if we reach the next stretch goal, uh, we're going to be putting together five different NPCs of a of kind of an introductory power level in a fantasy genre. So your standard wizard, fighter, rogue, you know, putting that together as an NPC package and offering it as a PDF download for people as a thanks for backing the game. So we had to be a little bit more creative with some of the stretch goals we're doing because we couldn't upgrade the, the main books because they're already printed. And we also wanted to make sure that because the books are going to be in our warehouse in December, when the Kickstarter ends, we expect to be able to fulfill the Kickstarter in December or maybe January uh, if, if customs held up, for example. But it'll be within a very tight timeline. And so we can't do a lot of additional uh, stuff for, for stretch goals that are going to take a lot of time either because that would just delay the fulfillment of the Kickstarter uh, of the physical products and we don't want that so we're being a little bit more innovative with some of the stuff we're doing we're doing a just a little two by six bookmark that you know as a thanks a little besom bookmark people can shove in their books uh, as well as some of the the PDFs that we have and there's a few other things that might be unlocked as the campaign goes there's still two more, more weeks to go and we expect to see some more things unlocked uh, but it's a little different than other campaigns that are typically run. Okay. Now, you know, fans, they, they, um, uh, they always want to know what's next, what's next, what's next. Um, after this Kickstarter is over, uh, is there anything you foresee in uh, 2021 that might be, uh, uh, that might interest fans? Yeah, certainly. Well, one of the things we're doing, we're pivoting a little bit away from Bessem, not because we don't want to support the line, but because we work so hard at getting everything done in 2021. And at, by the end of this year, there'll actually be 12 Bessem products in backers' hands. But in addition, the one of the things, the problem that we had with, with COVID this year, locking down all the conventions, is that's a great opportunity for us to network and interact with freelancers to work on projects. So we're a little bit behind where we want to be on Bessem products to farming out to, to different freelancers. I, I could certainly work on my own stuff here, and, and I'm the primary author for a lot of the products, but we wanted to bring in some some fresh eyes for some of the other things we're doing. So that will delay a little bit the, the core Bessem line into 2021. But since then, what we've done is we've pivoted and we've done a, a couple of new products that we're going to be working on, kind of three main lines that we're focusing on for 2021 in addition to, to more Bessem stuff. The first one is something called Anime 5e, which is a, I think of it as an anime versions of the fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons style. So this is a point-based approach. We did a Bessem D20 back in the early 2000s, which was a, a Bessem port on D20. This is... Some people think it's very similar, but it's actually a, a very different approach. This is taking Dungeons and Dragons and making it an anime point-based game, which is not the same as kind of taking Bessem and putting it on top of D&D or D20. So a slightly different approach. So Anime 5e, that's one of the, the big products we have coming out next year, as well as a line of TriStat system games. So TriStat system is the underlying system we use for 
Besom, for example. And what we actually have is a line of micro games coming out. The first one's called Pixies. We are playing a little, uh, you know, we fairy folk that live in houses. And, you know, they, in the end, there's, there's all these humans that are in your space and you want them out. And, and how do you survive with that? So if anyone who's seen Arietti uh, by Studio Ghibli or perhaps the Borrowers movie or read the book, uh, you'll understand certainly the genre that's coming from. So these are our box sets of TriStat System micro games. They're a very simplified and stripped down version. Pixies, the first one. We have a couple other ones uh, that we're working on in the pipeline as well. And then the final big product is the second edition of Silver Age Sentinels, which is our superhero version of TriStat System, superhero RPG. It's called Absolute Power. So we're changing the name. It's not Silver Age Sentinels second edition. It is Absolute Power. And when SAS first came out in 2001, we've now advanced the world and everything has gone 20 years in the future. So it's set in 2021. And so heroes are older, villains are older. Some people have changed sides, some have died. Uh, so a lot of things that happen, of course, during that time. And so that's one of the other big core books we're launching. Again, using the TriStat system, the same system that's in Bessem. And so if people are looking at getting different systems and ideas, it ratchets up the power scale, of course, because superheroes typically are, you know, are on a higher level than a lot of the typical anime stories. And so that's the three main focuses of pillars that we're going to be doing for 2021 and of course we'd love to get more best some stuff out as well excellent I'm, I'm very excited about the future um uh where can anyone that's maybe you've heard of this for the first time and they come, they want to know more about um besm uh where can it go Sure, we're all we're all over the socials, of course. Uh, Discami has you know Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. But if the, the simplest place to go to get started is Bessem for Life, so Bessem for BSM4 dot life, and that URL takes it directly to the Kickstarter. From there, you can get all of our social links and whatnot. But we're at Discami, D Y S K A M I. We're easy to find everywhere. So come and join the community we have. It's really quite good. It's very active right now for the anime aspect for Bessem. And as time goes on, it'll be interacting with uh, you know Absolute Power, Anime Five E, and some other aspects right now. But our focus right now has been on Bessem. Excellent. Well, Mark. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us about this. Uh, again, I'm really excited about this. Uh, I've always wanted to uh, uh, take certain uh, anime that I've seen in the past and and have it as a as a role playing scenario for my players. And this book makes it very possible. Um, and uh, yes, to our viewers out there, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more news. Have a good day.